I know what you're thinking. Why did she push him? Why does she look so... happy about it? I'll tell you why, and I'll show you why this manga is scarier than anything Junji Ito's ever written, and I'll explain what exactly makes it so terrifying. I'll take you through all of the abuse, the trauma, the pain and suffering all coalescing into one crystallized moment. Trust me, this manga will scar you for life. Blood on the Tracks is a horror manga by Shuzo Oshimi. It's very different from many other horror mangas. It doesn't focus on scary monsters or anything like that. Oshimi likes to focus more on real terrors. In the beginning of the story, Seiichi has a loving family that includes his father Ichiro, his cousin Shigeru, and his mother Seiko. Just your typical Japanese family. I'd also like to point out that Seiichi's name is combined from his mother and father's name. You know, Seiko, Ichiro, you know? Uh, cool, right? I don't know. I thought that was neat. If this was a shonen, someone here would get superpowers. Anyways, at the beginning of the story, Seiichi leads a quiet, peaceful, and normal life. His lovely doting mother wakes him up, makes him breakfast every day, pushes his cousin off a cliff, and he's off to school, where he has many friends and even a girl he likes. But of course, his life begins to unravel one fateful day, because main characters can never have anything good. Seiichi goes hiking with his family and his extended family, including his auntie, cousin, and grandma and grandpa. Shigeru and Seiichi have always been friends, which is typical for most close families. They'd always play together, with Shigeru maybe taking a rougher approach sometimes. He's kind of a smart ass, you know, like one of those little kids that would throw rocks at cars on the highway. Part ways along the hike, Sei and Shigeru head off on their own, with Shigeru finding a nice clearing on the hike. Shigeru beckons for Sei to come see the view, but he's hesitant. Shigeru is a shithead after all. Eventually, Seiichi's mom Seiko shows up looking for the boys. Don't worry, we'll get to the terrible part soon, but first a little backstory. Seiko has always been known as being overprotective of Seiichi. She used to stay with him in kindergarten just to make sure things were okay. She'll take the bones out of his food so he can eat it easier. There's even scenes of her feeding him by the spoonful like he's a toddler, when he's clearly old enough to do it himself. This shot of her standing five feet away while he's in school is a little ominous, right? Or how about this one? Yeah, that's kind of weird. Anyways, back to the mountain. With Shigeru close to the edge, Seiko tells him that it's dangerous and to come back. Shigeru, as most rebellious teenage boys would do, begins to wave his arms saying, "Wee!" Seiko again tells him to come back, to which he says, Don't be stupid, you really are overprotective. Suddenly, he slips on the edge and actually begins to fall. Seiko then rushes over and narrowly saves him from falling straight off the cliff. Shigeru begins to push her away, telling her to get off of him, but... Something changes. Something switches in Seiko. We don't know what she's thinking. We can't see her face. But Shigeru can. And... This is the world of Blood on the Tracks. We know the characters, we know some story beats, but we don't know any motives. Why did she push him? Why is she so happy? How is this so terrifying and yet I cannot put down this book even though it's four in the morning? Let's continue. In the moments after Seiko pushes Shigeru, there's a kind of heaviness in the air. Seiichi has just witnessed something his young mind cannot comprehend. Take a look at the art here. Shuzo Oshimi does a great job of illustrating his character's feelings through the art, whether it's through their expressions or the area around them. Like here, he could have Seiichi say, oh no, I'm so confused, what happened? Where did Shigeru go? But it's much more effective to show, to illustrate. That's an avenue where manga has an advantage over regular books. The mangaka can show exactly what's happening piece by piece, brick by brick, leaving little to the imagination, and instead lighting it ablaze with every little detail excruciatingly written out on our characters' faces. Even with that expression is terrifying. We can see the expression on his mother's face change from peaceful to panic in an instant. She starts screaming at Sei to go get help, go get help. Seiichi sprints into the forest and finds his family. And when they ask what happened, he lies and tells them that Shigeru fell off the cliff. Let's hit that again. 
Seiichi is already lying to cover up what his mother did, without her even asking. Why would he do that? You can even see him avert his eyes when he tells this lie, so he clearly knows it's not true. This is most likely denial on Seiichi's part, with him wanting to believe that his mother wouldn't do this kind of thing, and sort of defending who he thinks his mother is. It's like Michael Scott said, betrayal ain't just a river in Egypt. Anyone who came from a bad home will know the sheer terror that an abusive parent can bring. The injection of adrenaline into your veins, your heart beating out of your chest, not being able to breathe, cautiously analyzing every step, every breath, and every word from your parent to see if you're in danger. Let's skip ahead to this scene of Seiichi being interrogated by his mother. Don't worry, it's not a car battery and pliers kind of interrogation, but honestly, it's probably worse. Just look at this art. Can you tell me what Seiichi is feeling in this panel? Can you feel the terror and anxiety permeating through every line on this page, like the B.O. from a plumber underneath a sink? Anyone who's ever been interrogated by a parent knows this feeling all too well. Being pushed into a corner and stripped of your humanity piece by piece, when you barely understand the adrenaline rushing through you. It feels like the world is collapsing around you. Like if you don't tell them exactly what they want to hear, then you are worse than dead. You are an insect under their boot. Submit. Tell me what you did. I've felt this kind of terror myself when I was younger. My father was a lot like Seiichi's mother, without the pushing people off of cliffs part, thank God. And in moments like this when your back's against a wall, it can feel like your brain is an egg in a frying pan. It's absolutely terrible. And Oshimi is able to capture this in a way that shows so clearly the emotions of being in this situation. A situation that's happened to me and probably hundreds and thousands of other people around the world just like you. And that's why I think Blood on the Tracks is scarier than anything Junji Ito's ever made. It's like they say in zombie apocalypse movies, the real monsters are human. It's not all bad though. Remember the girl that likes Seiichi? Her name's Fukishi, and honestly, their romance is some of the best that I've ever read. The sickening and gut-wrenching story of Seiichi's home life makes his relationship with Fukishi mean that much more. Fukishi is one of the only good things in Sei's life. He even asks her to be his girlfriend in one of the best moments of the manga. She truly cares about him, more than anyone else does. They sit and talk for hours and hours every day after school stealing every calm, peaceful, and loving second they can get. Sadly, Fukishi's dad is abusive as well, and the two bond over their trauma. So, why does Seiko push Shigeru off the cliff? Why is she this way? Honestly, there's no answer that will really satisfy you. Sure, there's an answer in the manga, which you should definitely read if you have the stomach for it, but nothing will ever truly explain the pain that she's inflicted upon her family and her child. It's like in Bojack Horseman, when he says, you will inherit your parents' pain, but never fully understand it. Some people just get so off the beaten track that they don't feel anything anymore. They don't know who they are or what's going on. Some people just want it all to break, to be done. All right, everyone. Thank you so much for watching. I'll have a post on my Patreon breaking down this video soon, so please check that out if you want to support me. Uh, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Oh, my God.